Well, everyone. So this this meme here. By the way, you might wonder why I'm not in one of my protogen or you know salt strider or someone like that and why I'm not using a voice filter right now and why I'm just you know sort of in a generic Rex character well this is an out of character thing where I as the actor who plays all of these characters wanted to talk to you about something so about five days ago, I put out a poll where I asked all of you if I should put up a video where I talk about how depression manifests for me. Because, you know, depression manifests differently for everyone, and I think I should be open and honest about how I, how I see things and why I am the way I am and sort of like more explain the one behind the behind the character so to speak sort of like be open and honest and sort of talk about mental health in general hopefully destigma destig fuck i can't even talk destigmatize depression and going through tough times I thought my experiences and how and my insight into how I see things might help someone else. Thank you. Thank you for dinging at me. So this this meme here. You've probably seen this somewhere. It's rather ancient beta phase sort of thing where it's uh where it's the glowing-eyed thing sort of just looming over beta that's supposed to represent kind of how I generally feel on a very low level. How would I word it? I don't literally hear voices and I don't have nightmares about specific things. But I do have what I call my internal screaming, basically. It's a sort of like baseline low sort of noise of existential dread, basically. So, when I'm functioning really well, and I'm, you know, happy, and I'm doing things I like, and spending time with people that I enjoy, and, you know, generally just having a good time, my internal screaming is at what I call a lower, like, a manageable rate. Like, it's still there, it's not going to go away, because it never goes away. My mind is still focusing on, like, a million things at once, even as I'm cooking a hot dog, I'll have just, like, ran completely random thoughts about why isn't this the way that this is supposed to be, or I'll be thinking about my characters, my work, my writing, what I do here, just some random, complete nonsense or plan I have in the far distant future. Like, it'll be unmanageable, right? But then sometimes things happen that sort of, like, trigger my that sort of trigger my internal screaming i know trigger isn't the accurate word here because post-traumatic stress disorder but you you get the picture when it sets off my internal screaming i should probably say because you know that's a better word for it then you know like i start cursing a lot i start getting really sarcastic and i start getting like properly emotional and angry at some thing that I saw that triggered it and it sort of like feels like my brain is starting to disintegrate at that point and I can like I can practically like feel a headache growing and I become really moody and wordy and all of that and then the low base even the low base rate to internal screaming that causes me insomnia i can't sleep when my head won't just shut up about oh hey would you like to build this random thing eventually in the future hey why isn't this the way that this is like these constant 3 a.m sort of thoughts 
they don't shut up. My head won't shut up, and that's why I take antidepressants. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with taking medication that helps you, especially if it's prescribed by someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. There's nothing wrong with taking medication for a mental health concern. I'm just going to throw that out there. My antidepressants bring that internal screaming down to a level that's quiet enough that I can sort of like focus on nothing and actually fall asleep. Like I can't fall asleep without them. That's why you sometimes see me at like 3 a.m. or you might see me go and do random things at 3 a.m. and then at noon I am nowhere to be seen and have no consistent sleep schedule to speak of. That's caused by my depression. But I'm going to uh, go over the number one sort of reason that I that my internal screaming might be tr might be a set off. I'm not going to use the T word in this case because you know, and that's seeing other people get stepped on, stepped on as in mistreated for things they can't control, mistreated for wanting a basic decent standard of living, you know, things like that. People getting, innocent people getting stepped on for the benefit of people that are in power a lot of the time, or stepped on for the sake of stepping on them, or getting one over on them, or petty bullshit like that. Like, the reason for that, my upbringing was not kind to me. My mother had no frigging idea and had no business raising a child. I mean, my sister, may, she turned out okay. I didn't. So basically, I live a, lived a life of destitute poverty under my destitute mother, who had no idea how to properly raise a child that she wasn't prepared for. And basically, I ended up getting eventually... Too much for her, because, you know, bad living conditions and all of that. So I got sent to a foster home where I was then abused. Later on, of course, physically abused, as in I was beat over the head. Then I moved back in with my mother. We lived in a terrible, terrible home that had mold growing in the back, and we had... We basically had pretty much nothing to live off of. And she still didn't know how to properly raise a child. So then I went to someone else, and then, then I went to another abusive home, and then I went to the home that hit me in the first place, because, you know, I don't know, Stockholm Syndrome or something, where I got abused even harder. And I got thrown down hallways. I got whipped with belts, I got told I was worth less than shit, I got accused of things I didn't do because, oh, if you, it's always you doing things, never mind that we're, we might be doing something wrong, and then they'd just put on a fucking smile when people came to investigate what was going on, and there was no accountability, there was no accountability, the system that I was put in was fucking broken, Every authority figure had in that I'd had in my childhood had pretty much just tr either tried to fuck me over or had tried to just generally destroy me and step on me as a person. My upbringing was not pleasant. And that's one of the main things that drives my main motivation. My main thing that I hate seeing in this world, I hate seeing innocent people getting stepped on for things they didn't do, aren't under their control, or have absolutely nothing to do with the situation at all. And that's a broad, that's a very broad existential thing. Like, you see these rich billionaires who have three yachts to park in their yachts like Metryoshka dolls, while some poor sod who can only afford boots once every year and literally has $30,000 of student loan debt and two kids that he or she has to feed and depends on minimum wage to survive 
and works two jobs. No, you're just greedy for wanting a living wage, even though we haven't had a living minimum wage since the 1980s. And, like, it's this whole thing where these people are stepping on perfectly ordinary people who just want a basic standard of living and they want enough to live off of comfortably. And you're treating them like dirt for asking for that and finding ways to ask for that. Not only that, but we live in a world where people are literally held in bondage from what they believe, where they're from. Not like not like wage slavery in the Marxist sense, where you can only where you're a slave to your boss because your boss pays your wages and if you don't you're going to starve so it's coercion now i mean literally held in bondage as chattel slavery like black people were in the 19th century in the u.s there are literal billionaires hiding money away from everyone not paying a single cent of taxes while they literally and they claim that they, oh, we're supporting all these minorities and all that, while they're, while they're literally holding people in literal chattel slavery for being born the wrong way, or being part of the wrong social class, or believing the wrong religion, or this, that, and the other thing. Like, there's that, but there's also all of the terrible shit that I see in the world. People stepping on other people for believing the wrong thing or perceived believing the wrong thing. Then there's also being born the wrong way, being born from the wrong fucking place, etc., etc., etc. And all and all of this hatred that goes from one group to another, people stepping on other people, people murdering each other over whose interpretation of the Bible is right. People, like, I literally know someone who got bombed for being born the wrong race. I know someone who has been bombed. He has to wear glasses and he has chronic tinnitus and cannot and cannot handle my voice modulator as beta. Because he was bombed for being the wrong the wrong ethnic group. Like that's what really drives my ex that's what drives my depression these days. It's not me getting put in a position I don't like, it's seeing other people being put in the position I was in before. Being stepped on for being the wrong thing, or thinking the wrong opinions, or just, you know, being the wrong social class. Oh, you chose to be poor! It's like, everything that happened to me, there's no excuse for that. And likewise, there's no excuse when it happens to billions of people around the world. And the big part that really, really fucks with me about all of this, it's a train wreck I can only watch. There's nothing I can do to stop people from holding slaves in India and China. There's nothing I can do to stop people, to stop mega corporations from throwing away literal metric millions of metric tons of plastic that could be recycled and used for something actually useful into the fucking ocean or into some landfill in Africa for some kids to fuck around with like the world is on fire literally and figuratively people are being held as slaves and the world is going through a global pandemic that's being exacerbated by the fact that people, that some people have have got it in their heads that this is all just a control mechanism when there's other control mechanisms that are literally stomping on your fucking throat. All of that, and I can, I'm can't, I'm incapable of changing it. That's my existential problem with all of this. I can do nothing but sit there and watch. As the world burns around me, and the most I could do is send money to some poor artist who needs the money immediately because they got screwed over, or needs to pay some bill that they weren't expecting that will 
completely financially ruin them if they don't have the ability to pay that. Stuff like that. Stuff like that is what drives me. I want to try and make even a couple of people's lives better. Like, improving somebody's life is what really drives me. It's what makes me want to keep going. I know that, I know unlike a lot of people that a dead me solves no one's problems. And that's also why I care so much about those who are going through suicidal thoughts. I've felt suicidal before. Now I'm not. And I want to try and help them through all of their all of their all their demon inner demons. Well, I mean, that's a bit loaded of language, but still. All of all of their all their challenges. I want to help them through that. Because adding more suffering to the world just makes the world worse in general. I don't even really... I tried to keep this as concise as I could, but... Yeah. People say that laughing at the terrible things in the world is a coping mechanism. Yes, it's absolutely a coping mechanism. That's how I get through every single day. By making fun of the stupid things that hap that people say that hurt other people. By making fun of transphobes for being morons. For harassing trans teenagers for the mere crime of existence. Like, I know, I, there's, this, there's this one George Orwell quote. That really sticks to me as to how I see the world. If you want a picture of the future, picture a combat boot stomping on a human face forever. You can do nothing to stop that boot. You can only slightly cushion it. And I mean very slightly cushion that boot. That boot is going to stomp no matter what. And only if the entirety of the world or at least a big portion of the world, were to grab the boot and throw it off, could you possibly fix the problem? But it's not something that you as a bystander are capable of doing. That's not something I as a bystander are capable of doing. We can only sit there and watch that boot come down on that face over and over and over again, no matter how much that boot destroys the facial structure, how much blood is spewed across the ground, how many cracks in the pavement are spawned from that boot, thundering down over and over and over again to the end of time. That is what my depression is about. My depression is that boot. Seeing that boot every single waking day. But you know, there's a there's a silver lining to all of this. I have definitely always saw Beta as sort of a lens through which to filter all of this. A comedic way to sort of cope with that boot. And my work is partly to shine a light on that boot and to explain and to get you thinking about the world and how people interact in it, and to comment on the horrible ways I think that boot will stomp next. That's partly why I, I'm writing these characters, partly as a lens through which to view the world and and sort of, you know, pick apart the pick apart the problems. And you all unanimously. And I mean unanimously. Not a single, not even, not even one no vote on the poll that led to all of this was had. Your support. I can't even express with words how much all of it means to me. I was going through a very rough patch of my life. I was going through one of the most stressful jobs I think I could ever go through. I was putting in long hours for uh, for just to get stomped on by a slightly smaller boot and told, oh hey, it's your fault if the boot stomps harder and 
I was, and I saw all of my coworkers getting stomped on, and I sort of like made fun of the war of the bigger boot. And you all support supported me. You were all there for me, and you all support you all supported. You all. How do I put this? I have. It's hard to express this, but you being there for me and you being so supportive and you helping me and you caring so much about about all of this, you keep you people keeping telling me, hey, keep doing things with these characters. Hey, keep making these funny things. Keep making us laugh. You're we love your content. We love seeing we love seeing what you come up with. We love seeing your surreal memes. We love seeing your funny reactions to things. It means the world to me. Like I thought I was going to be screaming into the fucking void. I thought I was going to get like 20 followers in the end, maybe one of which occasionally liked a thing I said. I thought I was just going to be screaming into the void and no one was going to find my particular vein of weird, somewhat surrealist comedy funny. And I'm seeing I'm making people's lives better. I'm I'm beyond floored that you share my stuff and you share you you take your time out of your day to say, "Hey, we're here for you on all of this. We want to see more of this. This is good stuff. You're you're not you're, you know, it's all going we're going to make sure that it's okay. We're going to support you in any in what what you do. There's no words to describe this. How much it means to someone like me. All I wanted to do was, you know, look at look at the world through the lens of some characters that were slightly funny, but were also kind of trying to get people to think about think about their lot in life and how how people can react to these same situations. Like I never thought I would get anywhere with this frankly i don't even know if i deserve all of you and yet every day you like and you share these things you show me that you that i'm doing some i'm brightening your day and i just it's hard it's so hard for me to talk about this like you people are the best thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, some. I mean, hell, my audience is probably one of the things that stopped me from jamming my fucking head in the wrapping machine when I worked at the when I worked at the factory. That stressful job I mentioned earlier. When I worked there and I was in my darkest hour and everything seemed hopeless, and I was in sheer fucking mental agony and I was eating irresponsible amounts of fast food to just cope with the sheer stress of working in the midst of a giant heat wave next to a 200 degree blast of air coming out of a super super dangerous machine that's spewing that's spewing out cucumbers basically faster than you can handle it piling the piling the fucking floor with with wrappings that you've got to throw back in working that shit for 12 hours with your back aching, your feet completely dead, your brain just completely shutting down, you're sweating, you just want to go home and cry in the sh fucking shower. You people being there for me when I was in that situation. There's no words. There's nothing I can do to repay you for being there for me when I was in these states. Picking me up. When I'm bearing my heart to you. When I'm watching that boot fall down on people that I care about. And seeing children and animals getting hurt by sick fucking freaks who take advantage of them. 
when I'm seeing all of these things, all of these people getting stomped on, all of this pain and suffering in the world that I have, that I can sympathize with, I've seen all this pain myself, and I want no one else to encounter this, and it makes me feel that pain all over again. You being there, and you picking me up, and you telling me it's going, you telling me that you care about, you care about me, and you want to see more of it, and... Fuck. It, I'm sorry for getting this emotional on camera, but you people have saved my life in more ways than one. There's no way I could repay you for all you've done for me. And sometimes I think that all I'm doing is just some dumb shit on Twitter. You know, sometimes I think I'm being harsh on people and just being a rude fucking ass all the time. And telling, telling some of these fucking freaks who want to destroy people for no good reason that they, that they deserve to be punished in the most gruesome ways. And you being there and me like, yeah, this is, these people are fucked up. You're doing the right thing. Like, <laughs> I can't, I can't even express how much it means to me that you're you're supporting all of this. You're supporting... You're you're doing your best to help me process all of this. You're tr trying to help me get through this. And sharing me... And, sh and helping... Trying to help me get rid of all of this pain in the world. All of this suffering that I see. That drives me over the fucking edge. All of this existential dread that I see, you being there for me, when it, in my darkest hours, when I feel like the world is just going to fucking collapse under the weight of all of this barbarity, all of this sick shit that I see, all of this suffering that pe selfish fucking vampires, selfish predators are putting on people... You being there for me, you helping me out in this, you helping me get rid of at least a little bit of this, saying, you made me laugh and you helped me with my pain. There's no way, there's no way to, I can't even, I'm just going to end it. I love you people for all you do. I just... I'm gonna end it here. Before this just turns in, out into fucking sobbing. Good night. And thank you for everything you've done. You mean the world to me.